In section 3.3, we're going to take a look at increasing and decreasing functions. So we know that a derivative is a function that's going to give us the slope of a line at any point along the function. So the derivative of a function is a function itself. We also know that if the slope of a line is positive, it's going to look something like this, where it's pointing up as we go from left to right, or if it's negative, it's going to be pointing down as we go from left to right. So putting those things together, we can see that a derivative will tell us about our function. So these next few sections are going to be telling us about whether our function is increasing or decreasing on an interval, whether it's concave up or concave down, and so on. So for our first fact, we're going to look at the sign of a derivative telling us about the behavior of the function. So if we have a derivative value that is less than zero, that means our function itself is decreasing because the slope of the line would be negative. If you have a value of a derivative that is greater than zero, then f is increasing because obviously the slope is positive. If you have a slope that is equal to zero, that means f is constant. So typically, we'll either have a constant function or most often, if you have a graph like this, then we're looking at those zero tangent lines. Here are the steps that we should follow when we're trying to determine the intervals of increase and decrease. First, we have to make sure that f is continuous on AB. And this one's kind of silly because we are also going to find the critical numbers. And remember, critical numbers are where f prime of x is equal to 0 or f of x is undefined. And so if we have a point where it's not continuous, that's just going to be one of those places where f of x is undefined. So if it's discontinuous at a point. Then we're going to take the domain, whether they tell us the domain or it's implied, and we're going to break it into intervals divided by the critical numbers. So this will make sense when we have an example, but we're going to start, say, with negative infinity up to a critical number, and then from that critical number to the next critical number, and then from that critical number, say, to infinity. And so we're taking the entire domain and just breaking it up into parts. And the parts will be defined by those critical numbers. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a point from within each interval, and we're going to say, within this interval, is the derivative positive or negative? And if it's positive, we know that the function is increasing, and negative, it's decreasing. So let's do an example so it all makes sense. Let's take a look at our first example. What we're going to do is we're going to start by determining if our function is continuous and differentiable. And we can see that this is a polynomial, so we can say that f of x is continuous and differentiable on the interval negative infinity to infinity. So how do I know that? Because there are no restrictions as to what values I can plug into a polynomial, and we know that there are no asymptotes or anything like that in a polynomial function. Step two, we need to find the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3x. And again, show whatever work you need to there, but it's really not required that you show any work. Step three is I need to find the critical numbers, which means I need to set f prime of x equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 3x, leaving me with x minus 1. So my critical numbers are x equals 0 and x equals 1. Again, I'm showing you the kind of work that I would show. You can certainly show more work than that. You can set 3x equal to 0 and solve. And you can set x minus 1 equal to 0 and solve. But I trust that you're capable of doing that work in your head. Step four is I'm going to take the entire domain, which is negative infinity to infinity. And I'm going to split it up into parts based on my critical numbers. So negative infinity to zero 
open interval, so really then at this point is x equals zero. Well, I already know what happens at x equals zero. I'm going to have a zero tangent line, a zero slope tangent line. So then from zero to one, what's happening in that interval? Well, obviously this is x equals one, where I'm going to have a zero slope tangent line. And then this is one to infinity. So I've taken my entire domain and cut it into parts. Now, typically I wouldn't show this middle step, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just since this is our first time doing an example. What I want to do is I want to find a test point. I want to find some value that's say between negative infinity and zero. So say negative five. And a point that's between zero and one. So that's one half. And a point that's between one and infinity. So I'm going to choose two. It doesn't matter what value you choose. It just matters that you cannot choose zero or one because we already know what happens at zero and one is that our tangent line is going to be equal to the zero the slope is equal to zero so again this is a part i usually wouldn't show but then the next part is really just to plug those values into the derivative function so i need to find f of negative five and i really don't care what the value is i only care what the sign of the value is but for the sake of our first example we'll go ahead and show the work so I'm going to take 3 times negative 5 squared minus 3 times negative 5. That gives me positive 75 minus negative 15, which is positive 90. Now I only care about the fact that it was positive. Now I'm going to do the same thing for 1 half. And I would say 3 times 1 half squared minus 3 times 1 half is going to be 3 times 1 fourth, so 3 fourths, minus 3 halves, which means 3 fourths minus 6 fourths, or negative 3 fourths. So I only care that it's negative. And then for 2, f of 2 is 3 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2. That gives us 12 minus 6, which is positive 6. So really, all I care about are those positives and negatives. So I'm going to show you the real graph in a minute. But this tells me that till I get to the point of 0, I have an increasing function. At 0, it turns around and goes decreasing. And at 1, it starts increasing again. So this is a rough, rough sketch of my graph. So what I would typically show you is the intervals and the sign and I would not show you anything else so let's take a look at the real graph here's the real graph it increases to the point of zero and again at zero there's that zero slope tangent line which we knew was going to happen and then it decreases down to one and then I have that zero slope tangent line at one and then it starts increasing again try this question on your own when you're ready press play to see how you did all right, so my very first thing is to say that g of x is continuous and differentiable over the entire domain, negative infinity to infinity. Then I'm going to find g prime of x, which is the derivative, or negative 12x squared minus 6x. Then I need to set g prime of x equal to 0. I'll factor out a negative 6x, giving me 2x plus 1. Find those critical numbers. So x is 0, x is negative 1 half. And then take those numbers and go from least to greatest. So even though I found x equals 0 first, this is the lesser of the two. So I go to negative 1 half, negative 1 half to 0 and 0 to infinity. Now, feel free to show your test point. Feel free to show your work. Feel free to not show your test point or your work. In my head, I'm going to plug in a number between negative infinity and negative 1 half. So say negative 1. I can see that I'm going to end up with a negative value. And again, if you are not comfortable doing the math in your head, don't do it in your head. Work it out. 
from negative one half to zero, I'm going to use negative one fourth. That's going to give me a negative value plus a larger positive value. And then from zero to infinity, say I'm going to plug in one. So that gives me a negative minus another negative, which is a negative. So again, just based on that, I can see that my graph is going to go from negative infinity to negative one half is going to be decreasing. I know it's going to increase till I get to zero and then it's going to decrease again. So something like that. And let's take a look at the real graph. So again, negative 0.5 and then zero, zero. And again, we're, we haven't talked about those Y values yet. We'll get to those in our next video. I wanted to throw in one last practice that was not a polynomial function. So this is obviously an absolute value function. Good news is it is continuous. So F of X is continuous over the entire domain. I didn't put differentiable because technically this is not going to be differentiable at the corner because obviously an absolute value is going to look like a V and it's not differentiable at a corner like that. Step two, we have to find F prime of X. Uh, we haven't done this before for an absolute value function. So notice I've included how to find the derivative. So this is saying to find the derivative of the absolute value of U, we're going to take, so think of U as X plus seven. So we're going to take u, so I'm going to keep my 3 in there, and then I'm going to take u, which is x plus 7, divided by the absolute value of x plus 7. I'm not even going to put it in parentheses. So 3 times x plus 7 over the absolute value of x plus 7. And then u prime means if you have a derivative of x plus 7, then you would multiply by that, which is just 1, so we don't have to worry about it. Step 3. Whoops, set that baby equal to zero and find the critical numbers. So zero equals three times x plus seven over the absolute value of x plus seven. Let's multiply each side by the absolute value of x plus seven. That gives me zero equals three times x plus seven. Divide each side by three. Subtract seven from each side. So there is my critical value. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to, I only have one critical value, so negative infinity to negative 7, negative 7 to infinity. Then I'm going to plug them back into the derivative function. So let's take, say, negative 8. Well, that would give me negative 8 plus 7 on the top, which would be a negative on the top, and then negative 8 plus 7, which is negative 1, absolute value makes it positive. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. Let's do the same for, say, 0. On the top, I would have 7, which is positive. On the bottom, I would have 7. Absolute value is still positive. So decreasing to negative 7, increasing after that. And if we take a look at the graph, we can see we did it just fine. Up next, we're going to take a look at the first derivative test.